Devin Nicholson here, and we are in week six of my second hepatitis C treatment that includes the new Hep C miracle drug, Incivec. And I'm here with Brent Saunders this week, who's actually beaten Hep C. I'm right now waiting to find out if I had a rapid viral response. I had that blood test done in week four. I still haven't heard back, and it's been a bit of a rough week for me. So I thought I would uh, talk to someone who has an uplifting story. You've defeated hepatitis C. So why don't you start by telling us how you contracted hepatitis C? In November of 1986, I, over a space of about a week, I was feeling lousier and lousier. On November 14th, 1986, I woke up in the morning, I couldn't move. Uh, my two, I was in Toronto at the time, my two roommates had gone to work for the day. Thank God one of them came home at the end of the day and, and found me and uh, phoned an ambulance. To make a long story short, I was in the hospital in Toronto diagnosed with Guillain-Barre syndrome. I was totally paralyzed because I was in intensive care, spent 55 days in intensive care. I was trached, uh, couldn't breathe, couldn't talk, couldn't move. Uh, one of the theories is, is that it's a, a virus in your blood plasma, so they said, we'll give you these plasmapheresis treatments, we'll exchange your blood plasma, and studies have shown it can help speed up your, your, your you can move faster. So I'll, you know, I'll, they said, oh, don't you worry, we tested for HIV and AIDS, but nothing was said about hepatitis C. I had the treatments, uh, my liver enzymes went right out of whack. I, I went to about, the nutrients were about two weeks or so, three or four times a week. Um, anyway, that's what gave me, it was bad, tainted blood gave me the hepatitis C. So someone else's blood used to treat the other disease is what caused your hepatitis C. And you had your first treatment um, a number of years later. You want to get into that first treatment, what it was like for you, and of course you have a family, what it was like for your family. Yeah, about uh, eight, nine years ago I had a, a treatment just involving interferon and ribavirin. I uh, went, I think about four months, it, it just wouldn't work. The, the enzymes never quite got down to, to normal, then it plateaued, and, and, and the side effects were, uh, again, uh, the weight loss, uh, but mood swings, terrible mood swings. I just had a hair trigger temper. It, it was bad, it was bad, and so finally, it, like I said, the, the, the blood tests were just showing it was not working after a while, so we stopped it, and it was hard on me, it was hard on my family. And is there any lasting effects from that first treatment that you still have? Uh, I was diagnosed uh, again about around that same time, maybe a year or so later with, uh, with celiac disease uh, and they think it may have been triggered, I may have had it sort of in the background but the interferon really triggered it and so I've, uh, I was again not able to regain weight and uh, I switched my diet, I don't eat anything now with wheat and the weight came back. And uh, what led to your second treatment, and what was that treatment like compared to your first? Well, I see, like you do, I see Dr. Scully Pacific, and uh, she had said to me, like I said, back in 2008, that, uh, you know, there's a new and improved treatment, uh, Pegatron, with the ribavirin. And I was initially quite reluctant because, again, the side effects from the first go-round have been, been quite tough, and especially the mood swings. And she said, no, 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 it's, it's, it's a lot better, whatever that means. So I, I did a 48-week treatment, and again, uh, there was no mood swings, but again, still the side effect, you're, you're tired and feel crappy and the weight loss and so on and so forth. How much weight did you actually lose from that second treatment? Uh, roughly about 25 pounds. Uh, I work downtown in a real estate law clerk and law firm. I, work, I have to wear suits and tie at work and I was just swimming in my suits. I had to you know, cut holes in my belt to make sure my pants wouldn't fall down. And how did it affect your family life, two young children? It's got to be tough going through treatment, dealing with uh, the problems that come up. It, it was, again, you're just tired and feel lousy all the time, like, like a flu. And uh, in the middle of all that was the bus strike. I was getting up at 4.30 in the morning to, uh, you know, big borrow steel rides with friends and neighbors. In the middle of all that, my wife was diagnosed with thyroid cancer and she had to have surgery and we, we were dealing with that. It was, it was hard. It was, it was a hard, hard time. I'm sorry, I, I, I can't rose color glasses. It, it, was, it, was a, it was a very hard time. But you, you got through it and you actually defeated hepatitis C. Um, you're now clear of the virus in your blood. What was it like to find out that you'd actually beaten the disease? You went through all this hell, but you came out on top. It would have been a very bitter pill to swallow if, if, if it hadn't worked after what I went through. My messing my mother, when, when I told her, she said, you know, you've won the lottery, son. She says, even if you never win in the actual money lottery, you've won like, the lottery of life. And it was, it was a very, very uplifting moment.
And what was your family's reaction to you uh, defeating hepatitis C and becoming clear of the virus? Oh yeah, we were all very happy. I mean, they had to watch me. You know, it was a tough go, and I mean, they had to watch me go through it. And it was, it was a, it was a really good, good, good moment. And then I, you know, I tested negative. You know, very, very happy moment. Now, Hep C treatment is extremely tough, especially now. There's a third drug added, Incivec to a lot of people's treatments and it has its own set of side effects. Do you have any tips that you found um, during your treatment that you could give someone who's thinking about going into treatment for hep C? Number one, if you're able to take the time off work, I just couldn't. We, we, I had bills to pay and I was to feed. I couldn't take the time off work. It was, it was a awful hard slog. If you, so if you can take the time off work and get lots of rest, watch your diet. Obviously, you know, you don't have to be, a, you'd be a complete idiot if you keep drinking and so on and so forth. So watch your diet, you know, lots of fruits and vegetables and just get your rest if you can. Well, it's a very inspirational story and I'm sure everyone likes to hear stories like yours and I'm happy you defeated hepatitis C and uh, I wish you all the best of luck in the future. You can continue your recovery and uh, you're obviously doing great now and your family's very happy. So it's, it's a great story to see. Thanks. And, and finally, one more thing I just realized. You actually caught hepatitis C from a blood transfusion. And I often hear people say, if you had a blood transfusion before 1990, get checked for, for hepatitis oh, C. Yeah. Would you recommend that oh, to people? Oh, definitely. I was, I was part of that big lawsuit that against the Red Cross and the government that, that went on uh, for people between 86 and 90. And uh, we sued for millions. We settled for peanuts. I've been left with permanent, uh, uh, you know, uh, liver, liver damage. I cannot get life insurance. Uh, if I die, you know, my wife's left with just a very little bit of money. You know, it's it's tough. If, if I can, it's uh, yeah. Get checked out. Definitely get checked out. If, you, if you, anybody should be checking themselves for hepatitis C, it doesn't you can get it from you know, if you shared razors with somebody who had hepatitis C, you know, that's that's a, that's that, that's what can happen. There's a lot of ways to catch it, and you don't always know you have it, and it can lie dormant for decades. Some people, like us, it was active right away, yeah. but other people, it can be dormant. So both of our suggestion to anyone watching is get yourself checked for hepatitis C. There's no vaccine out there for it, and there's no way of knowing if you have it or not unless you get checked.